Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Hi, I'm Bob the Canadian. Welcome to this uh, live English lesson where we're going to talk about everyday items as you can see over there. I'm just going to check all of my settings to make sure things are working properly. We're going to start in about 24 seconds. I almost said minutes. Seconds. We're starting now in about 16 seconds. It seems like everything is working correctly which is good. So welcome to all of you. We'll start in about six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about everyday items. The kinds of things that you see and use every day or more accurately, the kinds of things I use every day because this lesson was made by me walking around looking at all the things I use every day. This is part two. For those of you that haven't watched part one, I did it back in the fall of 2021. It was called Everyday Items Part One and I talked about things like tweezers, something that you use to take a sliver out or clothespins which apparently are called clothes pegs over in Britain. But in this lesson, I'm going to talk about a I think 40 more everyday items, things that you use every day, things that as you go through your day, you just need to have. Um and again, most of these will be things I use every day. I'm sure most of them are also things that use that you use every day as well. Anyways, welcome to this English lesson about everyday items part two. Before we get started, just a few things to note. I wanna say hi to Harry 300 and Wanda Prado, Lolly Lolly, Ralph, Good to have Todd here moderating the chat. Hi to Noriko who can't stay because she has to work. Sorry about that. Uh and I do want to mention as well one thing. It's Thursday night here. I don't normally do a lesson on Thursday nights. So, the problem is last week Friday, I had to go on a field trip. So, I did the lesson on Thursday night. Tomorrow, I'm giving an exam. My students are writing an exam at 9 a.m. So, I can't do a live English lesson tomorrow. But next week, I will go back to the normal schedule. Live lessons will start again on Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, just wait for that. Um I do wanna do a bit of an audio check here because I had some internet problems earlier but I think everything's working now. So, that's good to know. By the way, if you have a question during the lesson, there will be a form in the chat. There's a link. Click the link. Fill out the form and I will try to answer your questions. When I do these topic based lessons, I usually get through all the questions. So, ask one. Anyways, are you ready for a lesson about everyday items? One of the cool things is that I have most of the items here. I have to be careful when I move uh, because I have a lot of the things I'm going to talk about sitting around me and I also have a cup of water. So, I hope I don't spill that but let's get this lesson started. Here we go. A water bottle. So, yes, I do have a water bottle here. I'm hoping that when I hold things up to the camera, the camera will focus. Of course, now it's not working. It was working really well earlier but I think you can see this. I have started to use a water bottle almost every day. It's kind of nice because it has a lid and you can just flip it open when you want to drink and this one has a lock here as well so that if it falls over, it doesn't spill. We're supposed to drink a lot of water. That's a healthy thing to do. So, having a water bottle, let's see if it will focus this time around. Nope, the camera just doesn't like the water bottle. Having a water bottle is really handy. In English, when you say something is handy, it means that it's useful. It means that it is something good to have. Water bottles help you stay hydrated. Lunch bag. Do I have a lunch bag? Yes, I have a lunch bag. This is actually a lunch bag from one of my kids. Uh this lunch bag is something that a lot of people take to work or school now. So, a lunch bag, it's kind of hard to get it in the frame, isn't it? A lunch bag is something. I'm getting angry with my camera because it's not focusing. It was working so well earlier. What has happened? Anyways, a lunch bag is something that you can take to work or school. In the morning, you make your lunch and then when you are at work or school, you have your lunch. I'm going to have my lunch at noon today. Do you want to have lunch with me? Do you want to eat lunch together? Those are all common things that you might say if you uh, take a lunch bag to school with you. And then inside, because these lunch bags are insulated, 
we often have what's called an ice pack. Come on, camera. You can focus, camera. Let me just try something for a second here. I'm not sure why the camera is so stubborn right now. Nope. It's decided it's not gonna focus. Let's just forget about that. This is something you put in your freezer and then you can put it in your insulated lunch bag the next day to keep your food and drinks cool. We have a lot of ice packs in our freezer. Myself and my kids, we all put our ice packs in the freezer at night so that the next day we can put them in our lunch bags and we can keep all of our stuff nice and cool. So, it is handy to have an ice pack. Travel mug. Yes, this is my favorite travel mug. You've probably seen this travel mug because I use it during my live streams. The nice thing about a travel mug is it will keep your tea or coffee really hot for a really long time. It's also insulated. So, that means that when something hot or cold is inside of it, it stays really warm. Um let's <laughs> um I'm just laughing at the chat where Harry's saying the camera likes you more than your stuff. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Uh anyways, a travel mug is handy. A lot of people will make a pot of coffee in the morning and fill their travel mug and then they will be able to drink from their travel mug while they're driving. They'll most likely put it in a cup holder in their vehicle. Not sure why this one's next but yes, I do have a box of Kleenex with me. As you can see here, this is made by a company called Scotty's but we call these Kleenex in Canada. I think in most countries, people call these tissues but uh, in Canada, we call them Kleenex. You use them when you need to blow your nose. Sometimes you have a cold and when your nose is running, you need to blow your nose because you have lots of snot in your nose. Sorry, there's no other way to describe the stuff that comes out of your nose. We just call it snot. It's one of those English words that really matches the thing that it represents. Snot sounds funny and it sounds kind of weird and snot is funny and weird but yes, you would use a tissue or Kleenex if you needed to blow your nose. Breath mints. I don't have these um but it is quite common for people especially people who drink coffee to uh eat Brent breath mints. Not Brent mints. <laughs> breath mints as they go through their day. Uh breath mints are usually uh flavored with peppermint or spearmint or some kind of mint. You can see this one says fresh mint and they're meant to give you fresh breath. If you've eaten food that gives you bad breath or maybe you have uh been drinking a lot of coffee, a breath mint is a good way to have fresh breath especially if you're a teacher. It's sometimes a good idea because you're talking to students so often. You don't wanna be the teacher with bad breath. That's not a good thing. And then we also have chewing gum. Chewing gum is different than breath mints. Chewing gum is something you chew in your mouth. It becomes really soft and chewable as you put it in your mouth and chew it. You don't eat it. You don't swallow it. You chew it and it has all of the same flavors as breath mints usually. Usually there's mint or peppermint or spearmint, a variety of flavors. Um I used to chew gum when I was younger but I don't chew gum anymore but I do eat breath mints sometimes. So, another everyday item, something that's kind of um strange is if you take your pocket, if you pull your pocket inside out, there will be this blue fluffy stuff in your pocket and we call it lint. Lint is something that just kind of comes off of clothing. It accumulates in your pockets and in other places. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you dry your clothes in a dryer, um there will be a little screen that collects the lint. Um and the reason I'm mentioning lint is because the next item is what we call a lint roller. So, this is a lint roller. You can see this lint roller uh looks exactly like the one over there. You use a lint roller to get lint off of your clothing but also to get dog hair or cat hair off of your clothing. So, we have a lint roller because sometimes Walter and Oscar, our dogs, like to rub against our legs and if I'm going to work and I'm wearing good clothes, I'll use my lint roller to kind of roll my pant legs 
in order to remove the dog hair because I don't want to have dog hair on me when I go to work. Toilet paper tube. Do I have a toilet paper tube? Yes, I have a toilet paper tube. Toilet paper tubes are kind of cool. One of the cool things about toilet paper tubes is that uh you can make things out of them and if you're wondering where this came from, it comes from the toilet paper roll. When you're done using a roll of toilet paper, you have what's left on the inside and it's a toilet paper tube. Kids often use these to build things. Sometimes they'll glue them together and do other things. Sometimes they'll pretend that they're a pirate and this is their telescope but uh you definitely run into toilet paper tubes. Definitely an everyday item in my opinion. Again, this is what's left when you are done using a roll of toilet paper. Ziploc bag. So, some people, oh, I wanna make sure I don't spill stuff here. Some people use a Ziploc bag when they go to work, when they make their lunch. Um they will put a sandwich in a Ziploc bag. Um the reason we don't just call this a plastic bag is because of the top. The top can reclose. I don't know if you can hear that. Let's uh let's do this for a sec. Ready? So, now this bag is closed. In fact, if I put something in it, do I have something small? Yeah, I can put my remote control in it. So, if I put my remote control in it and then I close it, then the bag is sealed. It's very handy when you are making your lunch if you have Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags keep your sandwich fresh. So, when you get to work or when you get to school, uh it tastes as fresh as the time you made it in the morning. So, that is a Ziploc bag. Hey, let's do some questions and I wanna just check something for a sec. So, give me a moment here to make sure everything is working great. I'm pretty sure it is but uh except for the camera not wanting to focus. Should we do a little test again to see? Nope, it's stuck. The focus is stuck. (laughs) Okay, let's look at some questions here. Let me get to my question form. We have a few questions ready to go. Uh let's see here. Um from Renata. Hello, Bob. I hope you're doing great. I'm in doubt about something. Do roof tiles and shingles mean the same thing? What's the difference? Thank you again, sir. So, a roof tile is hard and it's made out of wood or it's made out of clay or it's made out of a solid material. So, when you have a tiled roof, they use roof tiles. A shingle is actually a flexible thing. It's like a layer of fabric and it has some sort of tar and then it has like gritty stuff on top. So, most of our houses here have shingles on them. So, they are different things. Um if you look it up online, you'll probably get a better explanation than the one I'm giving but definitely. From Hama, hi, Bob. When you say items, why do you change T to the D sound and what is the difference between items and products? So, I don't say items. I say items. We often do that with our T's. We flip it to a D or we flap it. So, when a T like when you say the word little, you actually make a D sound. When I say item, I make a D sound. It's a very common thing that English speakers do. Uh and what's the difference between items and products? Products are usually things that are made. Usually, they're made by a company uh or someone else um and items can be anything. There's just a general term for things uh that you have in your house or that you use. Leticia says, hi, dear Bob. I just wanna say thank you so much for all these years teaching us English with such enthusiasm. Well, no problem, Leticia. Uh and thanks for leaving a comment a few days ago. Uh I think almost a week ago on the one video. I used it in yesterday's short English lesson, I think. It was great. So, thank you for participating on my second YouTube channel. From Itsuki, hi, the best teacher, Bob. Which is more popular around you? Breath mints or chewing gum? I think older people use breath mints and younger people use chewing gum although don't quote me on it. In English, when we say don't quote me on it, we're saying that we don't actually know the answer. So, I'm simply guessing. I think that uh probably older people use breath mints, younger people use chewing gum but I'm not actually sure about that. Uh let's see here. Let me just check something. 
with my camera. I want to make sure that my camera works for the next segment because I have things I want it to focus on. I'm going to give you a spoiler. So, I think I've already held this up, haven't I? Strange camera. Strange camera that won't focus. Oh, well. No harm done. We will move on with the lesson. By the way, I'm not ignoring your questions. I've actually answered all the questions that were in the queue. So, we will continue with the lesson if that's okay with you. Here we go. A notepad. I did have a notepad here somewhere. Here's my notepad. So, I keep a notepad by my desk. Usually, the notepads I have are from some kind of business that was handing them out. This particular notepad is from the bank. So, I went to the bank and they must have given me a notepad. It's so handy having a notepad where you can write things down. If you're wondering where um what I do when I have an idea for an English lesson, I quickly write it down on a notepad. I keep one by my computer at home. I keep one by my computer at work. Um and then usually I add them to a big spreadsheet where I keep all of my ideas. Um but anyways, notepad really handy. Um I think what I use a notepad for the most is to write a grocery list when I go to the grocery store. Milk, eggs, bananas, bananas of course. By the way, thank you to all of you that live in countries that produce bananas. I still eat one every day. They are awesome. A charger. Do I have a charger? Yes. So, a charger is one of these fun little devices that plugs in the wall and then the other end has a spot for usually a USB cable so that you can charge your phone. (laughs) So, uh that one's on the floor now. So, gravity still works in this part of the world. I'll just point to this picture because it kind of rolled away. Um a charger is something that you use when you want to charge your phone. Maybe you want to charge your e-reader uh or some other device. You plug it into an outlet. You hook up a charging cable and you plug in whatever you want to charge. By the way, that's what our outlet that's what the prongs look like in Canada. I know they are different in all parts of the world but that's what they look like here. And then of course, we have a charging cable which I was gonna show you how this plugs into the charger but I dropped the charger. Um we have a lot of these in our house. Of course, a charging cable is what you use to connect your phone to your computer or you connect your phone to a charger um and then that's how you charge your phone or other devices. Um when I said we have a lot of these in our house, it's because there are six people living here and there are a lot of devices in our house. So, we have a lot of charging cables and chargers all over the place. An egg carton. So, this might seem like an odd one but yes, I do have an egg carton here. Um the reason I put this on the list of everyday items is because I eat an egg or two every morning. So, not only do I eat bananas but I do like having an egg in the morning. Sometimes I eat a boiled egg. Sometimes I eat a fried egg. Sometimes I eat a scrambled egg which is the same as frying it but you mix it up. Sometimes I have my eggs sunny side up or over easy. There are many ways to make eggs. I could probably do a whole lesson on it but I'm not going to. Anyways, an egg carton usually holds a dozen eggs. A dozen would mean 12 eggs but they do have egg cartons now that hold six. So, smaller ones for people that don't eat as many eggs as me. Ant traps. Yes, I have ant traps here. I wish the camera would focus because then you could see them a lot more clearly but the camera, should I force it to focus? Can I do that? Oh, no, that's not focus. Now, I'm really messing things up. What should I do? Click this? No, don't click that. We'll see. You shouldn't mess around with the camera during a live stream. Hopefully, everything's still working. Um it says ant baits but we call them ant traps but they don't actually trap the ants. Inside of here or inside of those, there's usually a a poison that will kill ants and usually what the ants do is they take what's inside here back to the um colony and then somehow it kills most of the ants. So, um we call them ant traps but they don't actually trap ants. They actually just give them something to eat that uh, isn't good for them. So, I'm sure if you live somewhere where there's a lot of ants, you probably use these. We certainly do here. 
I'm dropping things now. We certainly do here in the spring and in the fall. And then of course, there are mouse traps. We use mouse traps. We have a mouse problem. We do live out in the country. I think there might be more mice in the country. Um and we often have mice in our house. So, we do set mouse traps. It's not a nice thing to do because it's sad for the mouse when he tries to eat the cheese. But uh for sure, we have a lot of mice in the spring especially. When I say a lot, I mean like five or ten every spring somehow move into our house and then we use the mouse traps in order to catch them. And then Alexa or Google Home. I don't know if you guys have one of these devices in your house. We have um a few of these. This is a Google Home. We also have what's called an Alexa. It has a different name but we just call them Google Homes or Alexas. This is the device where you can say, okay, Google, play a song by the Beatles and it will start playing it. Or you can say, Alexa, play a song by the Beatles and it will play a song by the Beatles. So, very handy. Um I'm not sure if we call these personal digital assistants. Um most people I know just call it by whatever company they bought it from. An Alexa from Amazon or a Google Home from Google. Really handy for playing music, setting timers and doing other things that are just handy. Suntan lotion. Do I have suntan lotion? Yes. I have my ultra sheer FPS 60. No, SPF 60. Sorry, I said that wrong. I said the French version. Um this is something that I wear a lot in the summer. This is definitely an everyday item for me uh because I am someone who when I am out in the sun without suntan lotion or sunscreen, I burn. If I work outside all day and if I don't put on suntan lotion, uh when I come in, I will feel sore and the next day, my skin will be very pink or red. So, I know um that it depends on how fair your skin is. I'm definitely someone who especially early on in the summer, I do need to wear suntan lotion or sunscreen and I do wear a really high SPF. SPF is how the number that tells you how well it blocks the sun. Uh so, we usually buy SPF 60 which is very very strong. Wedding ring. Yes, I have my wedding ring. It's right here. Um I have I lost this once and Jen found it back outside. It was a miracle. Um we uh have compost in our kitchen and this somehow ended up in the compost and then Jen found it back a year later. So, this is a wedding ring. This is something that men and women wear to signify that they are married to someone. So, I wear my wedding ring so that people know that I'm married and I wear it on my left hand and we would call this the ring finger. Jewelry. So, I don't wear any other jewelry. I do not wear a necklace. I do not have earrings but some people do wear jewelry and those people would refer to their jewelry as an everyday item. It's one of the things that they wear and that's the verb we use. So, some people wear jewelry. Some people will wear an earring or they'll they'll wear earrings. Some people will wear a necklace or a bracelet um but definitely jewelry would be a very common everyday item that people wear. Oh yeah. So, I do have my Fitbit. So, we would call this a fitness tracker or a it's not really a watch but it works as a watch as well but mine definitely counts my steps. Um I put this on every morning. I don't sleep with it. I know some people wear their fitness tracker when they sleep because it will also track how well you sleep. I usually wear it on my left hand but in the summer, I start to wear it on alternate because otherwise, I have a white ring here because my skin is tanned um but underneath the fitness tracker, it's not. So, my particular brand is a Fitbit uh and but we would call it a fitness tracker. Uh maybe you just wear a watch or an Apple watch or something like that but definitely an everyday item for me would be that I put my fitness tracker on every single morning so I can track my steps and so I can see what time it is um and it also gives me notifications from my phone. So, this is connected to my phone. So, if Jen sends me a text message on my phone, my fitness tracker will actually show me the message which is kind of cool. Flyers. Do I have a flyer? Yes. Will my camera focus on it? Probably not 
We get these every Thursday. They come in our mailbox and they are usually from stores that are trying to sell groceries like this one. Do we try one more time to see if the camera will focus? No, it's being crazy. Um this one is from a grocery store but we also get flyers from um stores that sell electronics or home improvement items. So, again, a flyer is something that comes in the mail. Um it's like a little booklet we might call it but usually, we just call it a flyer here uh and then when you open it up, it'll tell you everything that's on sale that week at that store. Um usually, I read the flyers on Saturday mornings when I'm eating breakfast. That's my favorite time to read the flyers. Hey, let's do some members only questions for a minute and then we will continue with the lesson. So, let me get that set up. Let me change the setting here. So, members save. There we go. So, what we're going to do now for just a little bit uh is I'm going to answer questions directly from the chat from members. By the way, I do wanna say thank you. Uh, to Eduardo for giving me a super chat. It says, hi, Bob. I can finally see your live stream again. Thanks a lot. Unfortunately, Eduardo, I will be going back uh to Friday morning live streams uh next week Friday but uh as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing it tonight because I'm giving an exam tomorrow. So, sorry about that. Um let's see here. Harry 300 says to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Everything is nice here, Brent. It's quite cold though because it is early morning here. So, Brent has jumped in the chat as of a little while ago. Good to see you, Brent. Curious to hear from you whether all of the things I'm talking about are you whether you use the same names. I'm pretty sure these are pretty standard names uh for Canadians and Americans. Okay, let's see here. From Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Why do people call their handset daily driver in this day and age? Thank you. So, anytime you refer to something as your daily driver, it's it's like you're talking about something you use all the time. Um sometimes people will call it their daily carry as well. Um but I think that's kind of the cool hip new way um to say it. Uh let me see. What is a daily driver? Yeah. So, the car you use every day is your daily driver. Sorry, I may have messed that up a bit. Uh and then your daily carry can be refused (laughs) refused can be used to talk about the things you carry in your pocket every day. Uh Audie the tie in the chat says um let's see here. I do need my reading glasses today to read the chat. Things Bob the Canadian is getting old. It says, teacher Brent, he is another teacher that you should follow his channel. Learn English with this guy. Yes, he does awesome lessons as well. You should follow him. Um I think he's doing a lesson on weather, a live lesson on weather. I don't know if Brent wants to shout that out um on Saturday. I hope I'm not getting it wrong, Brent but I know you have something coming up. Uh let me see here. Let's go to the chat again. I think because I'm not doing these lessons at my normal time. Uh, I'm not getting as many questions. So, I don't have any questions in the chat and I don't have any questions in the form but Harry 300 has just asked a question. So, let's have a look at that. How do you describe the feeling after you eat too much sweet food and you are feeling like you want to throw up? That's exactly how we would say it. You would probably say, oh, I ate too much. Um I can't move. That's a common thing to say. At Thanksgiving, we have a big meal. Often people will say, oh, I ate so much, I can't move. Um sometimes people say, I ate so much, I wanna throw up. That means to vomit by the way. They're not actually gonna do it but it is something people will say. I ate so much, I might throw up. Um but usually I say, oh, I can't move. I ate so much, I can't move. Brent says, I hopped on when you were explaining Alexa. We're lined up, we've lined up perfectly so far. Awesome. Thanks, Brent for that affirmation. By the way, affirmation is when someone says that you are right. Yeah, I think that's the best way. Um so, this next question is a grammar question. How are, what is the difference between had been, has been and have been? So, it just depends sometimes on the subject that's being used but also it's a time thing. So, if I said he had been riding his bike, 
then I have to introduce another action. If I say he has been riding his bike every day, it's a repeated action and I could say um, they have been riding their bike every day. So, I'm not gonna go into a grammar lesson here because I'll explain something wrong but I would definitely look for a good lesson on that somewhere. Um, Lolly says, pas de question maintenant. Merci, Bob. No questions for now. Thanks, Bob. No problem. Hey, I do want to say hi to the 356 people watching. A lot of you might be new here because this isn't my normal time. I'm giving an exam at school tomorrow. Uh, so, I can't do it at my normal time. But if you're new here, hit the subscribe button over there and certainly uh, check out my channel a bit. There might be things that you find very interesting and things that you will enjoy learning. And then Brent does say, yes, a live lesson on Saturday about weather. Thanks so much. So, Brent on his channel, Speak English with this guy uh, on YouTube, by the way, will be doing a live lesson about weather. Should be good. Um, maybe he'll have like weather Maybe it'll be raining or something dramatic in the background and he can show you out the window. We'll see. Uh, hey, let's get back to the lesson though. Oh, wait. I just got a question from Audie. Here we go. Good morning, Bob from Thailand. Today, no question. Just would like to tell you this is my first time to learn English on an early morning in YouTube because last time I was so sad to miss it. I can, I got confused with the time. So, a little fix there but yes. Got it. And then Island Revo- Resort says, hi, Bob. Just saw it. Thanks. Hey, let's get back to the lesson. There are quite a few slides left actually. I'm over halfway but let's keep going and I might go a bit faster. We'll see. Coupons. These are not as common anymore. Now, you most often get discount codes that you can use when you buy something online but some stores still make coupons where you can go and you give the coupon when you check out. You give the coupon to the cashier and you might get 10% off or a dollar off a certain item. A coupon is like um getting a little deal just for yourself. Um sorry, I do have to remember. Uh Let It Be is my favorite song, Brent, I think. Um I don't know why. I've always really, really liked that Beatles song. I'm not sure if you were asking me but that is my favorite song. Okay, here we go. Hopefully, I did everything correct. I was just turning off members only chat. By the way, thank you to all of you who are members. Thanks for being here and thanks for supporting me. Here we go. Bike helmet. Yes, I have a bike helmet. It's right here. A bike that doesn't really look right. Oh, the straps are inside. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not an expert. Uh, so, a bike helmet is something you wear to protect your head. If you fall off your bike, then uh, you avoid uh, getting an injury. Head injuries are bad. If you ride a bike, you should wear a bike helmet. They are required by law in Canada. If you ride a bike, you should make sure that you have a bike helmet on at all times. Ball cap. Do I have a ball cap? Yes. This is an interesting ball cap though. This is a ball cap. In Canada, we would call this a baseball cap. We would call it a cap. We would call it just a hat. We would call it a ball cap. It has a number of different names. This one is actually from a company that sells seed. So, it's not for a baseball team. Even though when you hear the word ball cap, you might think it's for baseball. It's just a term we use when we talk about hats. This is one of my ball caps. I don't wear them very often. I should wear them more maybe. An umbrella. I do not have an umbrella with me because it's bad luck to open an umbrella inside. But an umbrella is something you use if you go out in rainy weather. You open the umbrella and you carry it above your head and it stops the rain from hitting you and then when you're done, you kind of shake it off and you close it and hang it up in your house to dry somewhere. Umbrellas are very, very nice to have when it's raining. Power pack or charger. I have one right here. You probably wish you could see around me because I just keep grabbing things. These are cool devices. It's like a big rechargeable battery but on the end, it actually lets you plug in like a charging cable. So, if I wanted to charge my phone, I can plug it into this power bank or power pack or portable charger and I've lost my phone now. What did I do with my phone? Oh, I put the flyer on it. I am losing stuff and then I could plug my phone into the other end and then this will charge my phone. Super handy. 
I might just let that continue working there so that my phone is charged for tomorrow morning. But yes, in English, we haven't totally decided what to call them. Some people call them power banks. Some people call them power packs. Some people call them portable chargers but they are just a nice device that you can use to charge your phone or another device. When you don't have access to electricity. When Jen goes to market, she takes a power pack with her to charge her phone. Rapid test. This is the everyday item that I'm glad I do not have to use anymore. This is a COVID-19 rapid test. Um we aren't too concerned anymore uh because the COVID cases have really gone down here but um certainly whenever I get sick, I have to take a rapid test before I can go to work. So, that's the words we use. You take a test. I have to take a test and then I have to tell my boss the results so that if let's say I have a stuffed up nose and I'm using lots of Kleenex, um I if I still felt like going to work, I would need to take a rapid test. Um I would need to take a rapid test and then tell my boss that the results were negative and then I could go to work. I don't have a box fan here but a box fan is a fan that looks like a box as opposed to an oscillating fan which turns or a ceiling fan which is on the ceiling but it's getting really really hot here. Um so, if you live in a house that doesn't have air conditioning, you will probably have a box fan so that you can have lots of cool air blowing on you. You will turn on your fan. You will set it to speed one, two, or three usually. If you like to have air that kind of blows in different directions, you'll get an oscillating fan. That's a fun word to say by the way, oscillating. An oscillating fan turns back and forth. Whenever I use an oscillating fan, I usually lock it so it doesn't oscillate and so it just blows on me. And a lot of houses will have a ceiling fan which is another nice way to have some air movement on a really hot day. A ceiling fan is of course on the ceiling and there's usually a switch or a dial on the wall that allows you to turn it on. Um but yes, definitely as it gets warmer here, it's uh it's nice to have um a box fan. Box fans sometimes people put in the window uh or an oscillating fan that you can put on a table or desk or a ceiling fan which is permanently mounted on the ceiling and you can turn it on with a switch. Of course, if you're lucky, you have air conditioning. So, I put the words AC because in English, it's quite common to refer to air conditioning. The machines that make your house or place of business cooler, it's common to just call it AC. Do you have AC at work? Yeah, we have AC. Uh, oh, we don't have AC at school so it's really hot. My classroom doesn't have AC so it's very, very hot in June and in September. So, again, AC stands for air conditioning and it's basically a machine that makes the air cooler so that you can be comfortable. Sometimes when you have little kids, it's nice to have a night light. So, a night light is a small light that you plug into an outlet and it's very, very dim. It's not bright. A night light is really nice to have. Um this is actually the night light from our bathroom. So, we have this plugged in in our bathroom so that if Jen or I or one of the kids needs to go to the bathroom at night, um we don't have to turn the light on because you can see. When our kids were younger, we would have a night light in the hallway so that if they got up at night, um they could see a little bit if they were walking around. So, we call this a night light. Ours has a happy face on it. So, um I don't know if this makes me happy when I go to the bathroom at night but uh, we definitely have a night light in both of our bathrooms. An iron. I don't have an iron. I don't use an iron every day. It's not really an everyday item for me but sometimes my shirts are wrinkly and I like my shirts to not have wrinkles. I like my shirts to be flat and wrinkle free. So, I will sometimes use an iron in the morning. Um the reason I put this on here though is so I could say iron a whole bunch of times. I like to iron my shirt. This is a hard word for English learners to pronounce. It's not iron. It's iron. Iron. There are a couple of different pronunciations I think but in my part of the world, we say iron. I'm going to iron my clothes. 
oh, your shirt's so wrinkly, you need to iron it. So, there you go, iron. I, I don't even know how to explain how I say it. But anyways, it gets hot. It shoots out a little bit of steam from the bottom and when you uh, iron your clothes, they get all nice and wrinkle free. It takes all of the wrinkles out. Alish, so we have a new puppy. His name is Walter. We have a full grown dog named Oscar. We train our dogs to walk on a leash. Even though we live on a farm and the dogs can run free, we still train them to walk on a leash. So, it's important that um uh when we do need to put them on a leash that they're used to it. In English, when you say someone or something like a dog is used to something, it means that they it's they can do it with ease. It's normal for them. So, our dogs sometimes about once a day for Walter, um we put them on a leash and walk them. Um in English, we have another phrase. So, they know who's boss. We wanna make sure the dogs know that Jen and I are in charge. We're the boss. So, we usually use a leash to train them a little bit and we hook it onto their collar. A dog wears a collar. I don't use this but I wanted to include things that other people might use every day. One is a diary. A diary is something that you write in every day. You might also call it a journal but usually a diary is something that you write in at night. You buy it as a book and all the pages are blank. Um and then at night, you just kind of write a few things that you did that day. So, today was a nice day. I went to the market, sold lots of flowers, etc, etc. I don't keep a diary and that's the phrase you use. You say, oh, do you keep a diary? And someone say, no, I don't keep a diary. Um but a diary again is a book that you write things in. Uh you write in the things that you did that day. I have a French English dictionary and I have a French dictionary and that is something I use quite regularly. Probably not every day but probably four or five days a week. I'm looking in my French dictionary. I have a petite la russe. It's this thick. I didn't bring it with me. I should have. It's it's just upstairs but um a dictionary is something that you probably use every day. It's probably an everyday item for you whether it's an actual book or whether you use an online dictionary. Dish brush. This is a dish brush. This is our little dish brush. We use this for washing dishes. So, normally, this is by our sink in the kitchen. When we do the dishes, when we wash the dishes, we use this. By the way, in Britain, I think they say to do the washing up. In this part of Canada, we say Uh, After supper, we do the dishes or after supper, we wash the dishes. So, this is a dish brush and this is a dish cloth. We use this to dry the dishes. So, we use the brush to scrub. We use soapy water in the sink. We use the dish brush to uh, wash the dishes and then we rinse them and we use the dish cloth to dry the dishes. Advil. So, there are a number of different pain medications. There are a number of different things you can take if you have a headache. This is not something I take every day but the older I get, um I find that once or twice a month, I take Advil because I might have a really bad headache or I might have a really sore muscle. Again, I don't take a lot of Advil um but Advil, aspirin, Tylenol, those are all common names for different kinds of painkillers. So, we call them painkillers in English. There are pills that you take uh, if you have a headache or something else hurts and you can buy them at a drugstore or pharmacy without a prescription. That means the doctor doesn't need to write you a note in order for you to buy them, okay? This is my personal list of things that I um make sure I have every day. So, we talked about everyday carry. Um which is kind of a hip new cool term that I don't use but if you were to ask me, what do I have with me when I leave every day? I have my ring. I have my Fitbit. I have my phone. I have my wallet and I have my keys. So, before I walk out the door every morning, this is what I make sure I have. I have my keys, my phone, my wallet, my ring and my fitness tracker or what I call a Fitbit because that's the brand name. So, that is, I wonder what yours are. I wonder what 
four or five or six things you make sure you have in your pockets or in your handbag or purse uh, when you walk out the door. But these are the five things that I must have with me every day when I leave the house. Hey, that's the end of the formal part of the lesson. I think I skipped one of the question periods. So, I'll get that back to that in just a sec. Um let me get uh the question form up here. There's only a couple of questions left um but I will answer them. I am going to skip the grammar questions. So, we might be done sooner than later. From Vitor, is there something you think one day you won't use it anymore? An everyday item. Yeah, I hope that someday I don't have to use this <laughs> and and this anymore. We don't have a dishwasher. So, we definitely wash all of our dishes by hand. In English, when you say you do something by hand, it means day um I, we will use a dishwasher to wash our dishes hopefully. Um anyways, folks, that's all the questions from the forum. That's all the questions that I have. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, it will come out in a few days. I will remove all of the user questions and it will just be a pure lesson about everyday items uh and it'll be about 25 minutes long, maybe a bit longer. Uh it's good to rewatch it or at least listen to this lesson again. Do remember there is a part one. If you search my channel for everyday items, you'll find part one. Watch the lesson only version uh for things like clothespin, tweezers, uh, there were a whole bunch of things that I talked about in that lesson which I think you would enjoy as well if you didn't watch it. Anyways, again, do consider uh listening to this again or watching it again to train your ear. Also, if there was a part you didn't understand, rewatch it later. Watch that 10 minute segment again. Uh usually there's automatic English subtitles within a few hours. That might help you. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks to Todd for hanging out and moderating. Uh as you noticed, Dave was not in attendance tonight. Dave is a busy person uh but he'll be back next Friday morning, I believe. Anyways, bye to Harry. Bye to Cecilia Audi. Uh speak English with this guy. Uh Cecilia, let me scroll down. Did I say Lolly Lolly? Lolly Lolly might have gone to bed. It's pretty late over there. Bye to Island Resort and all of the other members that are here. Bye to Audi as well. And I should put my reading glasses on so I can actually see things. Give me a second here. Uh bye to uh Alcides, uh Cecilia, Vitor, Mercury, Holy Josh, Zhu, Fabricio, Itsuki, Elvis. Thanks to all of you that asked questions. That was awesome of you. I do appreciate that and I hope this lesson uh this English lesson about everyday items was helpful for you. Thanks for hanging out and uh I'll see you Tuesday with a new lesson and next Friday with another live lesson.